growing at a staggering pace, so we're seeing 33% bandwidth growth year over year. That really means um, any 10G wavelengths which you have today would need to turn into 100G wavelengths by 2020. And by this, clearly people want to know what happens after 100G. And um, the, the most prominent formats kicking around there at the moment are 400 gigabit and 1 terabit. Um, while the two are um, distinct there, I think they have one commonality, which comes back to the, the previous point there. So really, uh, rather than just implementing a specific modulation format there, we need to find on the network level the best compromise between um, format, spectra efficiency and reach. And this really means we need to have network programmability or what we call it software defined optics there. For us, software-defined optics means programmability on the optical layer and um, this is required to really um, make use of untapped capacity which we have in the network. If you look into what we do in 100G systems today, we're actually transmitting 100 gigabit per second on a 50 gigahertz channel grid. Um, this is very efficient and for a 100G channel we probably could not get much better. However, if we want to go to 400 gigabit per second channels or to a terabit per second channel, we would start operating with super channels composed of multiple optical carriers. And by spacing the carriers in the appropriate manner and using just larger bands there, we can transmit them more efficiently as we can do with 100G. To give you a specific example, for instance, we can transmit a one terabit channel on 350 gigahertz over pretty much the same distances as we do with 100G channels, or if we are willing to sacrifice more on the um, transmission reach, we could even compress them further to something like 200 gigahertz. And this basically means on a link level, we can gain the spectral efficiency and system capacity of 30% or more. In order to be able to um, make use of these benefits, we need to have our programmable optical interfaces which allow us to change the modulation format and the spacing of the carriers for the different formats. Um, and if we can do this adapted to the requirements, that means the transmission reach and, and the spectral efficiency, we overall can optimize the network. The programmable transceiver in order to allow us to pick the right modulation format and the right spectral efficiency for the reach we acquire, the rodems which we need. So those rodems um, apparently need to support different um, bandwidths, channel bandwidths as, as opposed to the 100 gigs. So on the 100 gigs side we have 50 gigahertz channels. If we want to go to 400G and 1 terabit, clearly this doesn't really fit into 50 gigahertz slots. So we need to have the capability to build up larger slots and to do this in the manner that it's not affecting the signal. And that's what flexible RODAM technology gives us. And people can use it already day one for the 100G networks and then have the possibility to bring in 400G or 1 terabit channels without having to change the infrastructure. The possibility to control the whole network. So with bigger bandwidth channels, we're effectively having contiguous concatenation um, of wavelength channels in our network and this can increase the wavelength blocking there and also the programmability on the transceiver side needs to be managed. So optical control plane technologies as we have developed them over now nearly a decade are the key element in order to make the optical layer there manageable and um, are required in order to optimize the layer for ultimate term spectra capacity. So if we look into 100 gigabit per second technology, certainly there are key ingredients in there which you want to carry forward to 400G and 1 terabit um, as well. So clearly coherent technology is there to stay for the core network and we'll be seeing the same kind of technology for 400G and 1 terabit. We can also see that 400G is actually natively derived from 100G technology there. If we look into the next generation 100G chipsets, we'll have the capability from the chipsets to form super channels and to change the modulation format from QPSK to 16 QAM, for instance, which are prerequisites for being able to design a flexible 400G transponder. 
from the baud rate on the 400G side, we're expecting to stay at a similar baud rate than what we have on the 100G side. And this is good for 400G, so we could do 400G solutions with either two channel or four channel um, uh, super channel configurations there. The interesting thing there is if we really want to move to one terabit per second, we have seen already laboratory demonstrations of one terabit um, channels there. We're really looking into more photonic integration compared to what we have today for 100G and what we're expecting for 400G. We're also looking at higher baud rates for this. Um, but we don't really see any fundamental reason or limitation why this cannot be done. It would probably just take a bit more time whilst the 400G technology will be more readily available.